It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. <coughs> It starts with some beer, so you shouldn't have fear. Two garbage guys with facts, but they both still have tact. It's that time at last for the best damn podcast. It's Can Crusher Day. And welcome back to Can Crusher Spotlight. Mark Martinez here bringing you another Great interview as we continue to do these on Fridays. And our interview today is with a man that has been in the business for over 20 years, has been hardcore, and now owns a chop shop in OVW. It's with Cash Flow. And we're going to bring up Cash Flow's interview right after this great, great ad by our friends at Collar and Elbow. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Guys, welcome back to Can Crusher Spotlight. Our guest this week has been in the wrestling business for 20 years, 20 plus years. He's held numerous titles all over in many different organizations. Can't crush your nation. This is Cash Flow. It, it is Cash. Can't crush your nation. How's it going? It, it's going great. It, it really is. Uh, thank you for being on the show tonight. Uh, sounds like fun. I. I'm, I'm I'm glad you approached me about it, Mark. I really am. Normally, I would pop a beer with you right now, but uh, with the illness I have, I probably should stay away from some beer. So, uh, if you want, yeah, I don't do I don't do well with beer either, Mark. I'm kind of one of those those guys get kind of angry. You know, you call yourself can crushers. You you start getting me drinking beers. Those cans will be smashed. Nice, nice. So, uh, first question, then we'll go backwards. What keeps you motivated over 20 years of getting beat to hell and beating people to hell? Um, the diversity, you know, wrestling's not the same, but, uh, it's not the same sport that it was 20 years ago, you know, and being able to, to jump between those eras has actually kept it extremely fresh, you know? Not to mention the support system that I have with with my family and my friends within, you know, wrestling, you know, as a sport. So, you know, you just you got to it's one of those things you either love it or you hate it. And if you love it, then you want to keep doing it until you can't do it no more, because there will be that time. And I just so happened to to make it 20, 20 years, 22 years. Yeah, and we'll talk about diversity as we truck along, but let's rewind all the way back to Little Cash. How <laughs> or who did you get uh, to love wrestling? Um, it's It started uh, with my grandfather, for one. I mean, he wasn't a wrestler, but, you know, wrestling was always, you know, a, a mainstay on, on my little four-channel television. You know, I, sorry, I hate to age myself out like that, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I grew up watching, you know, mostly Southern wrestling, but, um, you know, some of the, the Minnesota territory with Vern Gagne and those guys, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I 
you know, when I first started watching wrestling, it was all Wahoo McDaniel, Dusty Rhodes, Manny Fernandez, you know, and those guys. But as I got older and I, and I really started watching wrestling, you know, I started embracing some of the other characters and some of the other styles, you know, previous or prior to like the flares and the roads and those guys. So, you know, that, that's where it started for me. And, and every chance I got, I was in front of the TV watching it. So you're you know, after... go ahead. Go ahead. You're definitely not dating yourself because I watched on that same little TV with my grandfather. We watch TBS and we watch NWA all the time. Yeah, absolutely. NWA. And there was, uh, I always watched AWA. Um, AWA, it always come on on ESPN back in the day, like right after I would get out of, you know, elementary school and whatnot. So that was a big part of it, too. You know, I loved watching young Kurt Hennig go at it. I mean, that, that was great stuff. Bachwinkle, yeah. Kurt Hennig, then Lawler at, at sometimes would come in there, you know, you being a Southern wrestling fan, you know, you know all about Lawler, I'm sure. Oh, who for, doesn't? For sure. Uh, Bill Dundee was there once in a while. Scott, right. Scott Hall, uh, the Rockers. I mean, yeah, I, I was watching that same stuff as you were, but I right. had to hurry up and turn it off before my mom came home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Who who are your fans? Who, not who are your fans? Who were you a fan of growing up? Uh, you named a lot of people, but who did you want to when you were wrestling in the backyard? Who were you? Um, who was I? You know, that's really good. You know, I I I, I remember. I don't remember specifically liking one person, but you know, I remember. I remember early on understanding that that wrestling, you know, was, was a connection. And, and it seemed like I would follow along the stories that good old Memphis wrestling was, was, uh, putting out there. So it wasn't just one particular person, you know, I love, I, I really loved, you know, everything that Flair did, you know, with anybody, any, everything that Dusty did with anybody, you know, uh, Blanchard and Anderson, when they would come on, I would love their tag gimmicks with JJ Dillon, you know, um, <clears throat> some of the old Manny Fernandez and Wahoo McDaniel, uh, feuds were just brutal. And I mean, they kept me just staring at the TV, like, wow, these guys are really, you know, that really got me believing that wrestling was exactly that wrestling. Yeah, the I was just going to say the Manny Fernandez and Dusty Rhodes matches were unbelievable. Absolutely, the, you actually had to cover your eyes as a little as a little guy back then once in a while. Yeah, I mean th those are the stuff. So I guess what what really got me hooked on wrestling was you know the the connections and the the storytelling you know and you know I didn't really know you know exactly as much I didn't know what what I know now you know when it comes but. You know, it was just the way that it pulled you in, you know. So, And, you know, I, I just like the characters that the feds that I watched put out, you know. I just, that's just what brought me to the game. I had to have a piece. The storylines. The storylines yes, is a big absolutely. thing. Yeah. It, absolutely. So where did you get your start? Uh, I know it's many years ago. We don't have to say a date or anything, but many years ago. Who was your first trainer and what organization did you start in? I started in 1996, 95, around the same time that, that Danny started OVW. He started probably around 93, 94, if I'm correct. But I started over in Louisville, whereas Danny Davis was over in Jeffersonville. And I started at a place called IWA Mid-South. It They were coming fresh off of ECW doing hardcore wrestling so when i broke into the wrestling business i got broke into the wrestling business and it was based on hardcore wrestling i mean i did a lot of that and you know i tried to you know the way i was taught was you know you get beat up see if you can see if you can take it because at that time, wrestling was, you know, it was kind of in a transition stage as opposed to what it is now. You know, you were still, there were still parts of it that, you know, it, it was kind of a, a club to get in. You know, not so many people were getting in. So you really had to prove that, that you could do it. And, you know, doing that hardcore wrestling, I felt like I, I had to prove that. You know, I learned along the way. A lot of the guys that, that came in, you know, it's not like the wrestling schools are nowadays where, if if I can be honest, or 
you know, pretty cookie cutter. You right. know, they do some of the same stuff. They're they're built for large numbers of people. You know, some of the better ones. You know, it, it was kind of a one or two person deal. We we would learn a bit. You know, at the arena that we were wrestling at, and then guys that come in would come out and work. You know, work out with guys like Frank VZ Bullpain. Uh, you know, Tracy Smothers. You know, Doug Gilbert, Tommy Rich. You know, those guys would would actually take the time and work out with us with us younger guys and. You know, just talk to us, you know, let us know about the business part of it, because I think that falls on deaf ears these days. You know, a lot of guys, they teach a lot of the in-ring stuff and they teach a lot of, uh, um, you know, how to move around in the ring and how to connect with people. But they don't actually teach the business part of wrestling. And, you know, I think it, there's starting to be more of that out there. I think there are a few people that have been teaching people, but, you know. And that's that's kind of how I learned. I kind of learned as I went, you know. Right. Uh, I want to I want to jump on one thing that you said. So that's going to go back to. And I don't want to keep beating this dead horse. Uh, Storylines. The Undertaker said it in a promo one times. Uh, one time you do a somersault tonight. You have to do two tomorrow. You have to do three the next day. But you're not telling a damn story, correct? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that so. that is correct. So, but who was your trainer? I know who it is. I just want you to say who was your trainer was. I was trained by Ian Rotten, a guy named John Williams. He's fresh coming off a stint uh, at Paul Heyman's ECW with, uh, he was tagging with a guy named, named Brian Knighton, who most people know as Axel Rotten. Um, he wanted to bring a, a, a new game to town, you know, and at the time that that started, IWA Mid-South, there wasn't anybody else doing it except ECW, and it really took a foothold. Caused a ruckus in the state of Kentucky, yes, but it really took a foothold. Um, and, you know, it was very enticing to me. It was in – even me being, you know, a little older, I was 18 years old or 19 years old, the same thing when I went to a live show there happened to me that happened when I was a kid – uh, growing up, you know, I got pulled into the storylines. I got pulled into the hoopla, the adrenaline. The building was packed out. People were cheering and screaming. And I knew right then, this is exactly what I want to do with myself. And you live the hardcore life. Let me just run down some of these matches that you have had. 200 light bulb tubes death match. A four, yes. a four corners of pain match. No, yes. no ropes, barbed wire, Caribbean spider net glass death match. I don't even know what the hell that is. Yeah. Hey, and Mark, <laughs> it just, just food for thought. When I was doing all that stuff, I was one of the only guys wrestling without a shirt at that time. That We're going to talk about some of those. <laughs> a barbed wire ladder and then thumbtacks is the, you know, thumbtacks. Who cares about thumbtacks anymore? But I went. That's nothing. Yeah. Until they get in your feet. Right. Or your head or something like that. Yeah, all right. So let me just name some of the people that brought my attention out. Uh, you fought with the Rottens. You, you had many battles with them. So let's talk about the Rottens a little bit. Yeah. So you you and Ian were fighting all over the place. Any match that you, you can pop up and just tell us a little tidbit about it. All right. Well, um, see, Ian trained me, or he brought me into the business. OK, so, you know, I I did what a young guy should did. I shut my mouth. I did what was asked of me for the company. And, you know, if if he had something that needed done, <laughs> you did it. You know, I, I was right. You know, I was right there. I was trying to pay my dues. I was you know, I was trying to take take the steps that I needed to take to to get the bigger pushes, you know, and to get the work, the the guys, you know, that that he would bring in that that were names and guys that I would look up to later on you know so I you know I don't remember a whole lot from back then Mark I really don't <laughs> I really don't have anything you know I remember a few times me and Ian Rotten and Chris Hero okay you know what what most people know is Cassius oh no we had did a, a 40 minute uh, triple threat match you know it wasn't it wasn't a hardcore match but you know, still the same, you know, when, when Ian and I got in the ring with each other, it, it was hardcore regardless, you know, there were chairs swinging and, you know, there was stuff being laid in and, you know, I tried to give as good as I took. 
You also battled with the Necro Butcher, who is hardcore of hardcore. Yeah, we I did I did quite a bit with Necro, not just in IWA Mid South, you know. I fought with Necro a lot up in Detroit for IWF for a guy named A. T. Huck and Frank Young. So and up in Detroit, Necro was probably a little crazy, or he'd come out to the ring with a severed pig's head chewing on the ear. I mean, Necro's crazy, but, you know, he was fun. It, it, a weird story about Necro is, you know, you get a little nervous in the ring because, you know, he, he was blind. He couldn't see nothing, so <laughs> you had to kind of watch yourself. That's unbelievable. So I want to really know about what the hell is the No Ropes Barbed Wire Caribbean Spider Net Glass Death Match? What was that i did try to youtube it but uh like i said i took a long nap today so i well what they do what they do mark is they take the they take the regular ring ropes down and instead of the regular ring ropes they will um they will wrap barbed wire for the ropes uh and i'm thinking i'm honestly if if it's glass, you know, all it is is like a pit and they have like log cabins of glass, I, I would guess. But if it's Carib if it's like the Caribbean, cause I, I'm telling you, I have not done this. I spent about 10 to 12 years on the hardcore scene and then I started, you know, going another direction and I'm not right. taking anything away from the guys that still do it. But you know, I, I was always taught, I was taught at a, a, an early age that in wrestling, longevity is the key. You know, Tracy Smothers smartened me up about 10 years in, 11 years in. He said, Cash, you need to watch what you're doing. He said, in order for you to really do anything in the wrestling business, you have to be around to do anything in the wrestling business. He said, by default, people will get to know you. He said, so you need to watch yourself. And, you know, that light bulb went off, and then I started exploring other things. So, um, like I said, I don't know. I don't know exactly what Caribbean – you know, it may be just be the log cabins of light tubes and stuff like that. <laughs> that's what that's what I thought, and I was like, "Oh my God, where is this going?" So yeah, it's, that's pretty crazy. And you know what we we would have these one thing we would have these one things. I remember at, at IWA Mid South, they would call them fans bring the weapons match. Right. Okay, fans bring the weapons. So whatever would you know some crazy some crazy fan just put some kind of concoction together. You know, they'd put thumbtacks on wiffle ball bats and, you know, they'd bring in little poles with like regular light, you know, light bulbs from your room in there. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Some of that stuff that, that we had to do. Recent, recently there was a, an event up here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Asylum Pro Wrestling had one of those fans being in the same thing. People were duct taping light bulbs onto a wiffle ball bat. We're like, oh my god, what is this going to do? So, yeah, it's it's pretty nuts to see. And you know, you kind of get, you know, when you're in the back, you kind of look, you know, you look around, see the fans bring their bring their stuff in. You know, you're like, hmm, that's kind of creative. <laughs> but how, then you got to figure out how to use it, right? Or or how bad it's going to hurt. Yeah, or how bad it's going to hurt, right? So recently you've made your way back to OVW, and that's why you're on the show, because Can Crushers and OVW have a partnership, so let's talk about OVW a little bit, okay? Absolutely, Mark, absolutely. So why are you back in OVW? What, what kind of ruckus are you going to cause? I mean, you're already chopping the shit out of Sam Thompson. Well, the thing, you really want to know why I'm back at OVW? Yes. Because I look at OVW and I see soft. I look at past OVW and I say, there could really be a legacy there. Okay. Now I don't want to see soft and OVW in the same sentence. I'm back because there really needs to be some type of revolution in OVW. Okay. It needs to quit being a little whiny. It needs to quit being, it, it needs to quit being soft. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Wrestling needs a little more credibility in OVW. And and in all honesty, that's why I'm there at this point. And that's why you're bringing back the Chop Shop Challenge? Somebody's got to survive some of that? Somebody's got to survive some of that. You know, somebody's going to have to learn exactly the way I learned. Somebody is going to have to give as good as they get. And if they can give as good as they get, then they can earn my respect. Until then, 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tilt my head and I'll just tell you, take my money. Nice. Nice. So, <laughs> so with OVW, it's now partnered with impact wrestling as well. How much of a buzz is going on backstage there? Uh, the guys are very excited and you know, that makes me smile to see these young guys excited. You know, uh, I've had a couple stints at OVW and there have been times where it's been pretty stale, you know, guys just, uh, just kind of lolly, lolly dying around and they're just there. Okay. And with, with, with what, uh, Mr. Snow is doing with, you know, OVW is, he's lighting a spark in these guys. He's got all kinds of exciting things coming up. Impact is just the tip of the iceberg. And what you see backstage, you see guys holding their heads up a little higher. Guys have a little bit more pep in their step and guys are starting to take it seriously. And it may, it, you know, brings a smile to my face. I will say that. So you, you answered my next question in that one. I was going to say, how is it working with Al again and, you know, and Chad and all those guys backstage? But you answered that already. So there you go, Chad. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I, I can, I can, I can, let me, let me, uh, let me touch on that a little more because I, I'm going to shoot straight with you. I, this last, this is my third stint in OVW and, and the, I just now, as far as I can remember, <laughs> I just now for the first time met uh, Al Snow and working with Al and being able to pick that guy's brain is, you know, something that, that I would wish on anybody, including my enemies, because you do not get better um, picking guys brains that know less than you. You know, the best thing that any one of those guys in the locker room could have ever happened, the best thing that could have ever happened to those guys was for a guy like Al Snow to get into the locker room and do exactly what he does in that wrestling locker room. Yeah. Uh, several, several other guys that I've interviewed said the same thing. You know, Al has just put a little more pep in everybody's step back there. So that, that's great. Well, by default, what some of those younger guys don't understand, and, and I'll just put this out here. What some of those other guys don't understand is not just the knowledge that he brings back there, but the connections that a guy like Al Snow, the the eyes that are on whatever a guy like Al Snow does, a guy that's been around 30 plus years, you know, a guy that's done it all. OK, and it was like I was saying earlier, by default, he has made all the right moves and done all the right things. Why would you not try to cozy? You know what I'm saying? Why would you not try to to pick this guy's brain and to and to you know, have him critique you and tell you how to get better. Why would you not do that? You know, so. Right. Uh, on the same aspect, what advice do you have for the younger guys that you didn't get when you were just into the business that you'd pass along to them, to the Dustin Jacksons, to the Shiloh Jones, to, you know, King's Ransom? Uh, uh, what advice would I give? Learn where the business, learn the the, the business aspect of the sport of professional wrestling. Learn that aspect because it, it will help you get better in the sport of professional wrestling. Um, you know, make yourself, make yourself available, you know, do a little less talking and a little more listening. Um, you know, find guys that have similar goals and, and, and learn from them, you know, especially if they've been around a lot longer. Um, you know, don't take anything for granted. Stay humble. And, and you know, if it, things seem to not go your way, wrestling is the type of, of, of sport slash business that will always come back around, you know, and it's all about sticking with it, doing what you love, and always, always, always learn. Never stop learning. Once you start learning, stop learning, then you start getting old and you might as well get out because it's going to beat you to death. That's great for across the board, though. That, not just for wrestling business. That is even as a garbage man. It really, <laughs> I, it really I, is. And, 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 the, and that's true. And, you know, guys, guys look at wrestling. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't I don't really want to say that. But, you know, guys, <clears throat> guys get a little intimidated. 
you know, that brings me to the soft generation. That's what I call, you know, a, a lot of the kids these days. That brings me to the soft generation. Guys get intimidated. You know, they 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 don't want to go that extra step or, or you know, they're afraid that, you know, it, the age of PC, they're afraid that they're going to hurt somebody's feelings or, you know, they're afraid that, that they're going to take it too big of a lump because they've given too big of a lump. You know, you can't do that. You can't be afraid. You got to understand, you know, what it is that you're doing and, and you need to be the best at it. You know, don't try to be a, uh, you know, don't try to be the next, you know, Lesnar or, you know, I heard this from, from a, you know, a guy named Josh Gary. He's a, a head trainer at AML. You know, don't try to be the next Brock Lesnar or the next Shawn Michaels. He said, spend all your effort trying to be the best you. And, you know, that that's the best advice that I've seen in probably the last five, ten years. That was actually The Rock just said that in the Page movie. He, uh, they really? Were, they, they were like, how can we be the next Rock? And he went off on his whole shtick. And he's like, be the next, be the first Page. Be the first whatever Page his brother's name was. Yeah. So You know, I have, I have not seen that movie yet, but I've heard that it's great. It is. If we're a wrestling fan or a wrestler like you, you we, we yeah. love it. It's perfect. Well, I hear, I hear it takes it takes a peek behind the curtains. It does. It really. I was shocked. I really was shocked. I'm like, what? They're doing this? What the hell? Ah, well, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's the serious questions. Now it's time for me to just uh, ask you some randomness. Uh, if you could wrestle anybody in the past and the present, so you have to give me two names. What kind of match would it be? The stipulation and where? Three. Two. Three names. Is that what you said? Two names. Somebody from the past and somebody from now. Okay. Uh, from the past. Uh, man, there is so many to choose from. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> For pure nostalgia, pure nostalgia. I would love to have, have to have wrestled a nineteen eighty five, eighty six Dusty Rhodes. Oh my god. You know, at the height. At the height of the territories when they were selling 30,000 seat stadiums, you know, in the cages, you know, with the white hair and the color and, uh, what kind of, it, it would have to be a cage, you know, problem, perhaps maybe a war games, you know, so I could throw some of those other guys in there. Nice. <laughs> you know, Nikita and those guys, but, um, yeah, Dusty Rhodes in a cage, man, that would just, just, that would just be crazy. I'd have to retire after that. I'd be like, no, I'm done. I'm done. That's oh. it. And that would have to take place in Charlotte, right? It has Absol to. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, if you're on WrestleMania 35, who are you wrestling in New York? If I'm on WrestleMania 35, uh, if I'm on WrestleMania 35, I mean, you know, those guys, they got a lot of talent up there. Um, I'd have to, I'd have, I'd have to say uh, probably another Another Kentucky boy, you know. Uh, if I was on WrestleMania 35, I'd have to pick old Ricochet. Wow, nice. Yeah. Nice. Paducah, Kentucky. You know, amongst all the other names, and that's taking nothing away, you know, from, from, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan and, and, um, Cesaro, you know, cause I know those guys. Um, you know, Seamus, no, you know, AJ, none of those, taking nothing away from none of those guys, but, but a guy that's, that's, really changing changing the game a little bit these days is is ricochet you know with that with that kind of you know move set that he's got so that that would be interesting you he, know be definitely big clash of styles he is so fluent he really is cash it's unbelievable yes, yes he is and it, it, it would be it would be wonderful to be in the ring with somebody like that too uh last question that i want to give you the open forum how do you feel now, Can Crushers is all for it, so if you want to get on her bad side, you'll you'll hate it. But how do you feel about the women headlining WrestleMania? Uh I feel I feel delighted. It's about time. It's a long time coming. Thank you. Um, you know, I, without getting into any anything political, but I mean, G Mani, Charlotte Flair, you know, the <clears throat> What what she's and what she's done not just about women but what she's done and and you know her matches and and wrestling and the way she works you know she she puts guys to shame you know I I hate I'm not even the type of guy that would look at it as a a, a woman versus a man you know you know 
uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a breath of fresh air. I think it means professional wrestling is moving in the right direction. You know, I hope to see more of it. I love to see, uh, uh, you know, women headlining women only pay-per-views, you know, uh, I, I wish that they would loosen up and, and really let the sport of professional wrestling, you know, do intergender stuff, which they've started to a little bit, whereas before it had been kind of taboo and they didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, you know, and, you know, even out on the Indies, you know, all over, it, there's a lot of intergender stuff. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's moving in the, in the right direction and I'm extremely excited to see where it goes next. Nice. Uh, I was just going to say, up around Pittsburgh, where we are, uh, a lot of intergender stuff is starting to happen now. And I'll tell you, it's some of the greatest stuff we've seen. It really is. It makes for it. And, and this goes back to the reason that I got into wrestling. It makes for tremendous, tremendous stories. You know, that is the next step. That is the evolution, you know. And regardless of what goes on, regardless of how the styles that change in wrestling, it's going to come back to one thing. There's the connection to the story. That's just the way it's going to be. Okay. You've said everything we've said over the last year, so that's perfect. That is absolutely <laughs> perfect. All right, Cash, tell us where you are going to be and what you're going to be doing and spew out your social media so everybody can follow you. Awesome. All right, well, I mean, coming up, I'm I'm doing a lot of stuff with Innovate Pro Wrestling this coming Saturday, March 30th. I'm in the Smoky Mountain Cup. My first round opponent, none other than Son of the South, Toby Farley. Uh, Sunday, I'm doing a benefit show down in Franklin, Kentucky. Of course, you know, Wednesday, every Wednesday, Ohio Valley Wrestling, you know, at the Davis Arena, you got to come out and be a part of that. You know, it, it's starting to catch steam and pick up. Um, social media, you can, you can get on you can, my fan page, I am Cash Flow. Um, you can check out my YouTube channel as well. Uh, the link is on my fan page um, on Facebook. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. My my uh, my handle is Cash's Chop Shop. C A S H S C H O P S H O P. You know, give me a follow and give me a tweet. <laughs> nice. And finally, do you want to thank anybody? Do anything else? Because this is just another shtick that we have to keep you on for a couple more minutes. Well, you know, I, everybody that I, I think everybody that has had any hand of me being in professional wrestling but i do want to give a shout out to my beautiful wife angela she is the reason that i'm able to do what i do um without her and and her support i, I wouldn't be able to do anything you know i wouldn't be i wouldn't be back here talking to you on can crushers if if she wasn't managing my two little monsters running around in, in the other room so you know she she gives big props and and you know, thank all the wrestling fans, of course, you know, without those guys and, and, you know, without them supporting me, you know, there would be no cash flow. And that goes for every wrestler. You know, it's all about the fans. It, it truly is cash. Uh, I want to say thanks for coming on can crushers tonight and we'll see you real soon. Uh, you better see me. Oh, trust me. You'll see me. I'm hard to miss. I'm a big dude. Man, I can sit down for hours and talk wrestling with Cash. What a great guy. I just want to sit down and have some type of drink with him. And just, ah, oh, the stories that he could tell. Man, uh, guys, make sure you check out his YouTube page. Check out his social media. Um, again, I'm going to pound it into your head. Why have you guys not checked out OVW? It's $4.99 a month. Go to OVW Network. Check out all their old stuff. Uh, if you want to check it out real quick while it's still on YouTube, make sure you look at it. It's OVW Wrestling on YouTube. Guys, it's great. Everything is going down. And the Saturday Night Special is right around the corner on April 6th. So, hey, I want to thank everybody for making this possible. Thanks to Al Snow. Thanks to Chad Miller. Thanks to Bradley Benazuti for uh, getting this really, really all together. And again, thanks to Cash Flow. Uh, guys, if you want to come on the show, send us an email at cancrushers69 at gmail.com. And remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can.
Not a garbage cannot. See you Wednesday. Yeah.